Okay, by now you're probably getting tired of writing all these electrons out, or you're getting to the point about, hey, why isn't Hammond, you know, what's going to happen when he asks for, to do gold, which has 79 electrons, or lead, which has 82? Well, the nice thing is we're going to now talk about a shortcut. So we don't have to write out all those electrons, especially if we're having to do orbital notations and technically we have to draw arrows. So it's simply called noble gas notation or noble gas configuration. And this can apply to both writing the exponents, which is electron configuration, or writing, drawing the arrows, which is orbital not notation. So it's a shortcut. So what I'm going to do is start with copper. Copper has 29 electrons. So what I've written out there is its electron configuration. And again, all the exponents add up to 29. So here's how we do the shortcut. It's real simple. We identified copper as the element we're writing. We go back to the previous noble gas that comes right before us. So the element in group 18. Well, once we go back to the element in group 18, copper has exactly the same notation as that noble gas because it can't, you know, this noble gas came before copper. So copper has what the noble gas has plus a few more electrons. So what we want to write, instead of writing copper all the way out, we're basically going to say it's the same as argon, which is the noble gas that comes before it, plus a few more electrons. So if we come back to the periodic table and say, all right, here's copper. What's the noble gas that comes before it? Argon. Argon has 18 electrons. Copper has 29. I have to take into account the difference. Uh, if I pick uh, lead, okay, what's the noble gas that comes before it? Xenon has 54 electrons. Lead comes after it. It's 82. So I don't have to draw out 82 electrons. I'm basically saying it's xenon plus a few more. So I can apply to any element anywhere on the periodic table. Now, somebody might ask, well, what about a noble gas? We want to write a shortcut for a noble gas. All right. Let's say we want to write the noble gas notation for xenon. Well, the same thing, the same rule applies. We go to the noble gas that comes before that element. So xenon is the same as krypton plus more electrons. And that's how we approach the noble gas notation. Let's so look at a couple examples here. Here's uh, copper. So copper's electron configuration written out completely, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d9. Right above it is argons. 18 electrons, 1s2, all the way up to 3p6. So we see that they're identical to up until that point. Well, then after that is what is in addition to um, argons notation for copper. So we see here's the extra. Well, then that's what we do is we say, all right, copper is the same as argon plus a few more. We come down here to 10. If we write 10 all the way out, which would be kind of long, 50 electrons, 1s2 all the way out to 5p2. Well, the noble gas that comes before it is krypton. It has 36 electrons, 1s2 all the way out to 4p6. So we see these two are identical. So what we write is, we say 10 is the same as krypton plus a few more. Again, this can apply to orbital notation or electron configuration. Now, some people might think, hey, what about that whole dot thing? Dot thing doesn't matter. So we come back to electron dots. What's the highest occupied level for copper? Level four, how many electrons? Two, so it gets two dots. Let's come down here to 10, highest occupied level. Level five, four electrons, four dots. Uh, Krypton, highest occupied level, level four. 2 plus 6, 8 dots for 8 electrons. So this, the whole dot notation is not affected by this because we're not writing all the electrons. We're only writing the ones in the end, okay? which actually is even better because we don't have to look at the whole thing. We can just come back up here to car, or copper and say, oh, level 4. We only have to worry about what's back here in argon. We come down here to 10. Oh, we only got to worry about the ones there at the end, level 5. 5s2, 5p2. So we have a total of 4 there for 10. So that's one very quick, easy way that we can simplify these, uh, write these a lot easier, and obviously take more less time to do them. All right, what I'm going to do here is I'll have you pause, and I want you to 
identify what the electron configuration or orbital notation would be for these four. The first two, you're writing the complete notation. The last two, you're writing the noble gas notation. And the third thing I want you to do is to write the electron dot for all three or for all four. And just kind of have that next to your answer. So at some point, uh, after you've watched this video and you're kind of working through these, you know, I want you to show me in class that you know what you're doing. Because if you can do this, then again, this is the most important thing in section three, because this will lead into uh, chemical bonds and things that we'll do in later chapters. The last part of this section, we're going to look at f orbitals. So elements near the bottom of the periodic table that have quite a few electrons in them, uh, so many that we start dealing with levels that uh, incorporate electrons that are in the f orbital areas. Basically, what we're talking about, we're talking about elements in these bottom two rows. You notice the periodic tables, you know, we'll talk more about chapter five, how it's arranged and why it's arranged the way it is. But we're really talking about these elements here at the bottom of the periodic table. Now, if you have a periodic table, I want you to get one out. And I want you to notice something here. We have element 57, lanthanum, and then it jumps to 72. Well, some periodic tables will have some type of a, a, a asterisk or a arrow or triangle. And you notice that it goes 57, then dump, jumps down here to 58, goes all the way across to 71, and then back up into 72. Same thing down here. It goes 87, 88, 89, and then 90, all the way down to 103, and then back up to 104. So what happens is we fill in these last orbitals. There is something a little bit weird happening with the f orbitals. So what I want to do is, is jump back real quick to the energy diagrams that we looked at uh, more in the beginning of this uh, section, kind of in the middle of the beginning. And we talked about the orbitals and the sequence and the order that they're being filled. So as we go through here and we look at these orbitals, sorry, there it is, we'll notice off here to the, the left side, we go, you know, 4s, 4p, and then we realize it's 5s a little bit before 5d, then 5p, then 6s. So off here, we see 6s followed by 4f, so 6s, 4f, 5d, 6p, 7s, 5f, 6d, okay. and then in the end, 7p. They just don't show 7p. So we realize that, again, we're talking about energy changes and the different energy levels. So the pattern becomes the, the 4f's, even though they're level 4, that they're closer to the nucleus, the f's are a fairly complicated structure. They're, they're, they're shaped to their orbitals. Therefore, it takes a lot more energy to fill up a 4f than it does a 5s or a 5p or even a 6s. But it now becomes a little bit easier to fill up a 4f before a 5d. Not much, but a little bit. So if we come back to these orbitals, what actually happens, here's our 6s orbitals. Then here's our 5d1. Then it jumps down, and here's our 4f's, 4f1 all the way to 4F14. Then we come back and we go to 5D2. And then D3, D4, D5, D6, D7, all the way up to D10. So it's kind of odd. What we do is we, we start the, the 5Ds, then we go to the 4Fs, and then we come back to the Ds. So again, simple little phrase here. We start the 5Ds, then we go to the 4Fs, and then we come back and finish the 5Ds. Same thing with the, the next row. We start with the 6Ds, we go to the 5Fs, and then we come back to the 6Ds to finish our configuration. There's not more electrons. There's still only 14 there in the bottom two rows. There's still only 10 here in the D block, okay. 
but it, it, you know, it, it sort of throws out of whack a little bit our sequence and our order. Uh, is that a big deal? No. How often are we going to be dealing with the elements down here in the bottom periodic table? Not very much, but we, it's definitely something we need to know and understand. All right, so here's what we have. We have barium, lanthanum, cerium, lutetium, and tungsten. And I want to kind of you know, show what we have here. If we have, and this is kind of what I phrased here that I wanted to talk about, if we have 2D, we must already have F14. So back here, if I'm at D2, okay, if I'm at D2, I must have already completed the 14s. Okay? So if I'm here, I must have already gone through the 14s. If I'm down here somewhere in the Ds, I must have already gone through the Fs. The second phrase, if I just end at an F something, an Fx, then I'm only at D1. So if I'm down here at a specific F, say I'm right here at uranium, I'm at F3, so 5F3. Well, then that means I've only done the D1. Okay. So started the Ds, went to the Fs, I'm stopping in the Fs. So that's our second phrase here. So two things I want you to do here. I've got some elements here, 56, 57, and 58. Actually, let me, I'll, I'll clean these up a little bit here. 56, 57, 58, 71, and 74. I want you to write their noble gas notation. Their noble gas notation for these five, and hopefully you kind of start to see what this pattern is and how it changes. This is something we probably will have to talk about in class, and I'll probably collectively talk about it as a group. But uh, if you kind of get to this point and we can we can talk about it, you show me quick in class, and if you're good to go, then you get to move on. So pause this if you need to, because I'm going to show you one more screen, a couple more to do, and uh, then that'll be it. Here's four more. Again, if you got the, the four on the previous screen, then I want you to do these four. Okay. Elements 89, 92, 103, and 107. Again, it's kind of getting us to look at the variations between a D element and an F element. Again, all for these, write it in. We'll do the noble gas electron configuration. Okay. So the shorthand notation using exponents. So pause this, write these four down. If you're able to do the ones just on the previous screen and you're able to do these four, then then you've got the hang of the entire the, the entire situation in terms of electron configurations and all that stuff. Again, as we're doing these in class, you, you've got to show me that you know what you're doing off of these two slides and then um, you'll know you'll know and I'll know that you're off to a good start and you should be good for the chapter.